Thank you for listening to Dialogues on Democracy, celebrating IFAS's 25th anniversary. I'm Laura Osio. For the first time in Mexico's history, one of the presidential candidates in the July 1st general election is a woman. This marks another milestone in the increased political participation of women in Latin America, the first of which was the election of Violeta Chamorro in 1990 as president of Nicaragua. Rafael López Pintor, former IFAS chief of party Nicaragua and special advisor on the electoral cycle, talks to us about the achievements that have been seen in gender equality in the region over the past 22 years and how they have changed Latin American societies. For the first time in Mexico's history, one of the presidential candidates is a woman. Her name is Josefina Vasquez Mota, and she's with the Pan political party. What do you make of this development? I, I think it should be considered a, a landmark in Mexican electoral history mainly because the, this woman candidate by the PAN party is the candidate of a party which, whether it wins the election or not, has been in power for two consecutive terms and therefore is not a marginal candidate. Sometimes you have, for the first time, a woman becoming a presidential candidate that is from a small party or a party that nobody knows, you know, which is uh, future in politics will be. In this case, in Mexico, you have a candidate, a woman candidate, from a very important party, and that in itself makes the candidacy of a woman more relevant and more significant uh, and, and more illustrative you know, of change in the political culture than it would be the case if that woman would be the candidate of a small party. The first female head of state elected in the Americas was Violeta Chamorro, who became president of Nicaragua in 1990. What changes have we seen since then when it comes to including women in the political process? This is interesting because the, the election of Chamorro was something, I would say, almost completely different of what is going on now in getting women elected as president. Chamorro herself, uh, like to this day, to present herself as a housewife. So she was uh, appointed as a candidate of an over 20 different parties uh, coalition. So it, she was a candidate of consensus because she was uh, also the wife of a martyr, Mr. Chamorro, who was the director of a main paper. And that was a kind of candidacy, as I said, totally different from the pattern which has emerged in the last decade, where we have professional politicians, women who are professional politicians reaching the presidency. So this, this is a main difference and very important one. So Chamorro was a product of a special circumstances, while the more recent women presidents are the product of a social and political evolution, which is more widespread in the society as women having a voice and a presence not only in politics, but also in the society in general. A number of Latin American countries have or have had female heads of state, including Argentina, Costa Rica, Brazil, Chile, Panama. But how is female participation in other political arenas, such as the legislative branches or civil society, or even in the business sector, improved throughout the years? Well, here again, we don't find a pattern which is different from what is going on in the largest number of European countries or in the United States. The pattern in most of Europe and the United States is that you have women becoming men executives in the business sector, for example, or in education. Well, in education, women were always in the forefront, but in, in the business sector, for example. But in politics, very few women go to positions like women in parliament or even less uh, the prime ministership. Some of them go, but very few except in Northern Europe and Spain. While in Latin America, the pattern is one more of an equilibrium, is more symmetrical. So you have women getting into political positions, parliament, mayors, presidents, etc., etc., more or less in the same. I haven't done the research, and it should be done, and someone probably is doing it, but is, they are going into politics more or less to the same extent as they are moving up in the business sector. In the United States, it's just the opposite. You have very few women in politics at, at top positions, while you have totally symmetrical now, as the population census reveals, a uh, situation of women getting high managerial positions in the business sector. 
Europe, as I said, isn't very different, except Northern Europe and Spain, where women in politics are very prominent. Are there any quotas for women in government in Latin American countries? Yeah, I cannot tell you by heart, but in general, either you have a quota established in the law, in the electoral law, or de facto there is a quota, usually around 30% of uh, women, in the, since proportional representation is the usual electoral formula in Latin America, you have a quota of between 20 and 30% of women, most often alternating in the list with men. So uh, in Parliament, it's not unfrequent to find from 20 to 30 or even over percent of women in Parliament as a, as a result of this quota system, which is a positive discrimination policy. Latin American cultures are perceived as being traditionally male-centric. Has having female heads of state and females become part of political process impacted the culture at the social level as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, male-centered cultures are the rule in traditional societies in general, not only in Latin America, but with, so as, as, as you move from the traditional society pattern of uh, way of living into more urban, modern type of society, the less male center the culture is. And besides that, when you have some prominent woman, for example, becoming a president, this by itself pushes up the, the position of women in the society. And, and the people take the lessons. So I can see in Latin America, and I've been working in the regions for over 40 years now, and I can see here, in general, a much more symmetrical, as I said before, relationship between male and female in politics, but more so than in politics, in the society in general, in the society in general. If this goes uh, together with education, of course, but education in Latin America, the level of education is higher in general also than the economic level of given countries. So you, you usually find a much higher percentage of people over 18 going to universities, both male and female, than you have people over 18 getting good jobs. There is a lag between the uh, economic development, let's say, that way, and educational development. And educational development pushes up and against the male cliché, the male center society pattern. For more dialogues on democracy, please visit ifas.org.